Hi there. We did a poll recently on Spotify and we asked, do you like grammar podcasts? And your response? A full 89% of you said that you did. And I get it. Would you prefer to be working your way through a book like this, a traditional grammar book, or would you rather I gave you some quick tips in under 50 minutes to help you with your grammar? If you've heard of the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, you'll know what I mean. Sometimes just 20% effort at something will give you 80% of the results that you want. So today, let's see whether by understanding 20% about English sentence construction and word order, you can gain about 80% of what you need to know. It'll improve your English speaking this much more quickly than a grammar book. And find out how a character from the Star Wars series of films can help you understand how not to do English sentence construction. Stay with me till the end of this podcast and I'll talk about a way of using English verbs that's perfect for those times when you want to be a bit mysterious or you want to avoid placing the blame. Ever wondered how to say something happened without saying who did it? Stick around to the end to start learning about the passive voice in English. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. So before we do all of that, if you listen to us on Spotify, please share our podcast with people that you know. And if you're listening on one of the other platforms like YouTube, please subscribe or give us a like. Your support helps Adept English bring more engaging content. Oh, and don't forget to respond to our polls if you're on Spotify. Your answers are gold dust to us. It's been really interesting. So the answers are coming in on the back of podcast 668. We asked, should the unpaid work in the home be equally shared? And your responses are really interesting. We'll let you know. But any of this interaction on Spotify is helpful to us. So thank you for supporting Adept English in that way. OK, here goes. Seven tips on English word order and sentence construction. Number one, subject, verb, object. This is the golden rule for making statements, statements of fact. So British English follows subject, verb, object, like many other languages do. The subject means the person doing the action, the verb is the action, and the object is the thing it's done to, the action is done to. And there may or may not be an object. Examples? She read the book. The dog ate his bone. Obviously, these are very simple sentences, but subject, verb, object still holds for statements where it's more complicated. She enjoyed reading no end of books during the summer holidays. Or the dog who lived at the pub ate his bone noisily. So bear in mind, not all verbs can have an object. This is not me being religious. It's just an example I know off the top of my head. The shortest sentence in the Bible, if you know that, Jesus wept. So it's two words, still a sentence, subject, verb, no object there. And that's because to weep is a verb that can't take an object. Do you know the word for verbs which take an object and the word for verbs which don't take an object? Give you a moment to think. This is advanced level grammar knowledge if you have it. Transitive verbs take an object, intransitive verbs can't take an object. An example of a transitive verb, I drive a blue car. An example of an intransitive verb, I sleep really well in that bed. So subject, verb, object. I mentioned in my introduction how a character from the Star Wars films can help us learn how not to do English word order, English sentence construction. This character, of course, is Yoda. And Yoda has a unique way of speaking, which all English speakers are aware of. It gives him a strange air. 
And this is because Yoda breaks all the rules of sentence construction and word order. An example, your path you must decide, he says. So he's breaking subject, verb, object, and he's going instead with object, verb, subject. That's why it sounds odd to us. So if you don't want to sound odd like Yoda, stick with subject, verb, object for your statements. Number two, simple questions. <laughs> questions are difficult when it comes to word order. It can be quite confusing. So for most simple questions, you swap around the order of subject and verb to make a question. But it usually needs an auxiliary verb. Auxiliary, perhaps you want to practice pronouncing that because it's difficult even for me. Auxiliary, A-U-X-I-L-I-A-R-Y. It just means an extra an additional little verb that gets inserted sometimes in the English tenses. You'll know them when you hear them. So you can't just switch the sentence around to make a question. Taking the previous examples and just reversing the word order, it would sound like this. Read she the book? Ate the dog his bone? Again, these sentences take on a Yoda-like quality when you put them like that because they're not correct. No one but Yoda would ever say it like that. Another Yoda example, look I so old to young eyes, he says. So if you're not Yoda and you don't want to sound bizarre like Yoda, here's how to do it. Did she read the book? Did the dog eat his bone? Clearly those are both past tenses and they need the verb to do adding in in order to make them into questions. Let's just tackle the three present tenses in English to give you further examples. Questions would sound like this. She reads the book becomes, does she read the book? She is reading the book becomes, is she reading the book? And she does read the book becomes, does she read the book? So it's a bit easier if the tense already uses an auxiliary verb. Number three, negative sentences. Again, this is a difficult one. So negative sentences also tend to require auxiliary verbs. Often it's to do, to be, to have, followed by not. So again, if you go with the simple sentence and just add not, she reads not the book. It sounds like an ancient translation of the Bible or something or Shakespeare to us. We just wouldn't say that. Again, another example from Yoda. Adventure, excitement. A Jedi craves not these things. So if you want to do it properly and not sound bizarre, she didn't read the book or she hasn't read the book or even she hasn't been reading the book. The dog didn't eat his bone. The dog hasn't eaten his bone or the dog hasn't been eating his bone. That's how to do it. Just to combine points two and three, if you wanted to make negative questions out of those sentences, didn't she read the book? Or didn't the dog eat his bone? Or hasn't the dog eaten his bone? Or hasn't the dog been eating his bone even? Number four, adjectives and adverbs. These give more detail and they make your sentences much more interesting. And in terms of word order, they're quite easy. So adjectives, A-D-J-E-C-T-I-V-E-S. These are describing words for nouns and adverbs are describing words for verbs. A-D-V-E-R-B-S, adverbs. Adjectives always go before the noun. The red ball, the quick fox, the good looking man. Even adjectival phrases usually go before the noun the never-to-be-believed hero. She is reading a fascinating book. The dog is eating a juicy bone. Adverbs, on the other hand, usually go after the verb. She reads quickly. I eat slowly. He drives badly. After the verb is the safest place for them. Even adverbial phrases usually go after the verb. She drove incredibly badly the next morning. The dog ate his bone with a lot of slurping noises. There's a little bit of flexibility with adverbs. In that podcast on the grammar rules you can break, I talked about how you can split an infinitive with an adverb. 
That's not wrong. What you can't do is split the verb and its object. You can't put the adverb in the middle. The dog ate noisily his bone. Again, that sounds Yoda-like, that sentence, because the word order is incorrect. If you really wanted to emphasise the noisily, you could put it at the start of the sentence. Noisily the dog ate his bone. But it's more usual after the verb and the object if there is one. The dog ate his bone noisily. Number five, prepositions. This one's nice and easy. Prepositions are those tiny little words that show the relationship between other words. Common ones in, at, on, with, by, under, through, behind. Word order and sentence structure here. They always go before the noun that they relate to. She reads in the park. The dog ate his bone under the table. Nice and simple, that one. Number six, conjunctions. C O N. J-U-N-C-T-I-O-N. Conjunctions link words, phrases and sentences together. So you can join two sentences and make one sentence with a conjunction. Basic conjunctions are words like and, but, or, so, because, although. You'll have heard me talk about conjunctions in podcast 662. The grammar rules you can safely ignore. It's fine to start a sentence with a conjunction. We do it all the time. So conjunctions are useful for relating ideas. And sometimes when they're used, the two parts of the sentence that are joined are equal. They can both stand alone. The dog ate his bone under the table and then he got up and had a wander around. So the conjunction here, you write, it's and. And each part of that joined sentence can stand alone. The dog ate his bone under the table, full stop. Then he got up and had a wander around, full stop. But sometimes conjunctions create a main clause and a subordinate clause. So they create a part of a sentence that could stand alone and another part of a sentence which can't. Subordinate just means lesser than. Although is an example of a conjunction that creates a main clause and a subordinate clause. Although the dog was old, he still enjoyed a juicy bone. And the word order doesn't matter here. You could say the dog enjoyed a juicy bone and though he was old. That's fine too. So which part of that sentence is standalone and which part cannot stand alone? You're right. The dog enjoyed a juicy bone can stand alone. But if you just said, although he was old, dot, 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 People would be waiting for the rest of the sentence. It can't stand alone. So it's a subordinate clause, that one. Last one, number seven, passive voice. This is a way of using verbs where the focus is on the action rather than on who did it. So this demands a different word order, or at least it sounds like that. The opposite of passive voice is active voice. So that's the one that we're using most of the time. So active voice would be the dog ate the bone. Passive voice would be the bone was eaten by the dog. So here, although the dog is really doing the action, the bone is the subject of the sentence. That's the way that passive voice works. So the bone comes first in the word order. The bone was eaten by the dog. That's subject, verb, indirect object. So we're still doing subject, verb, object there. It doesn't always have an object. So you could just say the bone was eaten, subject, verb. Then you've no idea whether the dog ate it or someone else did. So the passive voice is great where you don't want to allocate responsibility or you want to remain a bit mysterious around who did it. All the cakes have been eaten, someone might complain. They're not saying who by, even though they may have their suspicions. The passive voice is a whole complex area. So let me know if you'd like me to do a whole podcast just on the passive voice. Okay, so if you get a firm grasp on these fundamental rules for English word order and English sentence construction, It'll really help you when you come to speak English. These basics will serve you well in everyday situations. Let us know what you think of this podcast. And if you've got any specific grammar questions, then please ask. 
Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.